Welcome back, everyone. I'm Coach Mike Hofer, undefeated correspondence player and color commentator for ChessStars.com. We're coaching a long time. Had many U.S. champions, Florida State champions, and in my 30 years of coaching, I've never seen a better training tool than the Choose Your Moves and Win Crown Contest on ChessStars.com. I actually came to this site wanting to hate it, and I fell in love immediately. And since then, several of my players, kids, have done well. You don't have to be a grandmaster or an international master to win this contest. I think it does help to be a title player and a coach, though. Yet the contest has been won by my own players, 11-year-old Victor Bear, uh, Roshan J. Raman, and uh, 9-year-old Yanlin Chen has been doing well lately, as has Raghav Kalyanaraman. And also has been Orkin Abdulov, Yuri Solodovnichenko, Gadir Husseinov, and me. But today, we are here to praise uh, Orkin, who had his greatest result ever. Now, so you want to win some money in the crown contest. Well, if you want to learn how to play the crown contest, the great Marty Hirsch does a fantastic intro at the beginning of every one of our broadcasts, and you can find those on YouTube. I'm not here to tell you how to do that. I'm here to tell you how to win. And I tried hard. <laughs> I tried really hard. Uh, two of my friends were playing yesterday. Uh, Grandmasters Gadir Husseinov of Baku, Azerbaijan, and the great Dr. Bassam Amin, uh, the, gr the uh, greatest player in the history of Africa from Egypt. Uh, I had a pretty good idea what would happen. I got the first 15 moves right in the contest, and I still did not win the contest. So uh, what we're here to do today is give you an anatomy of how Orkin won it. Well, the first move, Gadir is very predictable, and his, his repertoire is very solid, and it's also very narrow. And uh, it's pretty obvious he was going to play e4, so I put 100 crowns on the move e4, and uh, got very little back, because everybody was on that. Uh, Dr. Amin also returns the king pawn. Normal moves. And now, um, the only possible fork in the road here, in my estimation was uh, my friend Yuri Slodovnichenko, when he played Dr. Main, he actually played the scotch, and Gadir has done that occasionally against me, although Gadir would go into the scotch gambit, most likely. But yet, I was pretty confident Gadir would play the Rui, and he did. Um, Bassem must have been very happy at this point. Tells Bishop to leave. Bishop backs up. Now, Gadir will sometimes uh, play the exchange variation, but that, again, is, uh, leads to fairly uh, even play. I think Gadir wanted to win with White. So, well, of course he wants to win. I think Gadir felt he could win with White. Let me put it that way. He probably felt he couldn't if he were to take the uh, knight. So Dr. Mean brings out his knight now that he sold the uh, bishop to go away. Gadir castles. This is all mainline stuff that's been great for 400 years. Uh, bishop e7 to block the x-ray of rook e1, so that now uh, black is threatening to take on e4. Uh, Gadir has flirted with d3. I hate that move. Um, I, I feel that's, even though Magnus plays it, I feel it's a little bit too passive. I like rook e1. Um, of course, everyone likes rook e1, except for these guys who are afraid of playing against the martial attack. Uh, b5, because otherwise white's winning the pawn, so he tells the bishop to go away. The bishop has to go back. Now, again, we have a fork in the road. I had no doubt that Dr. Amin would play d6 because he wants to play the briar line. And if he plays castles, you might get an anti-marshal, and then you don't get to play the briar line. Now, the other thing is you could try to scare the guy by castling, and if he plays h3, you can still play d6 and still get into briar line. But you got a much better chance of getting the briar line by playing d6. So I was pretty sure that uh, Dr. Amin would go d6. Now, Kadir's a friend. Uh, I've played him quite a few times. And if I were to play a match with him, I'd try to marshal attack. And he's not going to allow it. 
and he's got a, a method of going uh, against the marshal that uh, I think that's the best chance to try to get a point away from Gadir is black. So, in my opinion, that would be right, but whatever, for what it's worth. Um, of course, Gadir, D6 and Ari Lopez. Pavlov's dog response. Wolf, wolf. Whenever black plays d6 or bishop c5, Nori Lopez, uh, white is almost compelled to play the pawn from c2 to c3 because uh, d6 is saying, hey, my e-pawn is defended. I'm about to play knight a5 and chase your bishop. Although Dr. Amin is not, was, was not intending to do that. He was intending to move his knight back to b8 because he is perhaps the, uh, the world's uh, foremost authority in the briar line right now. So... Castles, and now, well, let's look at the briar line. Had Gadir played h3, which is the normal line, then it's the briar line, d4, knight bd7. And we have all this uh, positioning of the uh, pieces. Looks like a lot of tempo wasting. Look at all the tempo wasting. Here it comes. I like a4 here. In fact, I've had some very good results in correspondence with that. And then... Um, This, this dance of the bishops here. Um, why, why, why are we able to do all that? Well, it's a closed position, and tempos don't matter in closed positions. Um, I would love to see somebody try to take on Bassam and his strength there, but Gadir wanted no part of it. He played d4, and I expected him to do that. I don't, I don't like that move because I think bishop g4 just allows black to get uh, equality too easily. And it was not hard to figure out Gadir would strengthen the center with bishop e3. And Basem played the best move. E takes d4. I've got 100 crowns in every move. I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> C takes d4. And now, of course, uh, Basem's not going to play knight b8 here. He's going to attack the leg squared bishop with knight a5. Prepare to challenge the center with c7, c5. And maybe even transfer the knight to c4, which actually became a very, uh, okay. I'm going to pause the recording, turn off those sounds. Sorry. All right, no annoying background sounds now. Thank you for uh, tolerating it. That's because I'm recording this right before our crown contest today, where uh, Dr. Amin will try to get revenge against uh, Gadir and maybe take it to Armageddon. No shalom, no shalom, as uh, Johnny Cash would say. So, bishop c2, obvious and good. Now my arrow keys aren't working. Isn't that wonderful? There we go. And now, clearly the best move is c5. Now, it's an interesting thing here, going back in chess history. Stockholm, 1962. My favorite player of all time. Robert James Fisher. The greatest King's Indian attack player of all time. I believe Dr. Amin has taken over the mantle for uh, Bobby, now that Bobby's longer with us. He died at age 64. I guess he ran out of squares. But um, not a king's in the attack. The other opening that Fisher was fa fabulous at, as every world champion has pretty well played this opening, Rui Lopez. This, act, this position, not C5, but this position has actually occurred in Fisher's career against the great Victor Korchnoi at Stockholm in 1962. Bobby won the game and the tournament. And uh, Victor played knight c4, and I think knight c4 is just way too early. Bobby dropped the bishop back and then drove away the knight from the active position. He's preparing to fianchetto the uh, bishop at b2. Judith Polgar's had a lot of luck with this as well. Uh, this just is not the right way for black to proceed. So I have no doubt that Dr. Mean went the right way with c5. I still have every single move right in the crown contest, and I still didn't cash for any money in this contest either. It's just, dude, these guys were just very, very good. This was a very competitive contest. And what's the deal with all that? Well, the contest is also very, very fun. So whether you're 9 or 99, you get to compete with the best players in the world. Yuri, Solo, Dovnachenko, Orkin, Abdulov, Gadir Husseinov, and many others. And you're having fun. One of the weaknesses I've known as a coach, we pay more attention to what we're doing to the other guy than what he uh, is doing to us. Here, you spend an hour, hour and a half having to analyze both sides. You don't realize you're working hard because you're having fun. So I believe this is a fantastic training tool. Now, Gadir forces Dr. Amin to immediately define the location of the light squared bishop by kicking him. It's just not a good idea 
to leave the other guy's pieces on your front porch looking in the window seeing if there's something worth stealing. So a good move by Gadir. Now, I also uh, disagree with theory here. Theory says bishop takes f3 is the right move. Granting white the two bishops has the refutation of being the most solid continuation, which has become very popular nowadays. I don't like a lot of lines that are popular nowadays, in my opinion. Like Peter Svidler, like Robert Fisher. Uh, don't just relinquish the two Bs. So I don't like that move, even though it gets played a lot. Um, another poor move here, uh, C takes D4. Uh, Black's got some problems there. Um, this, this just is not a good idea yet. So, I like what Dr. Mean did, Bishop H5. I think he did the right thing. I think he's got a quality. I was very happy. G4. I got that one right, too. Uh, President Sasha Starr didn't believe that that would be the move, but of course it was a move. Bishop G6, uh, a blind man with a cane, could predict that move. And uh, this was my last guess, dude. <laughs> Play T2. A very popular, that's easy for me to say, Rui Lopez motif of a moving knight to F1, G3. If you get it to F5, you usually have a kingside attack. So at some point, black normally will play g6, but now the bishop is in the way of that, and the uh, white squared bishop is a uh, big pawn right now. So let's look at the scoreboard. Again, I, I amassed 987 crowns for having every move right and putting 100 on every one of them. But I've got Matsu Leon right behind me with 855. And uh, Orkan Abdulov with his hoodie. Like Eminem and Bill Belichick, 784 crowns. And Slavko Popovich, I think that's Milan Popovich's dad, 697 crowns. And Marian Tudorashi, 692. I noticed from this contest, Marian has a very similar style to mine. We both hit, uh, I had 75% right. Marion had 76% right. So we both did very similar things in the contest. He likes to wager the big crowns too, as do I. Uh, you don't come afraid, man. Come prepared. Come swinging for the fences. Now, this is where I first made a mistake. Well, it's not really a mistake, but um, in previous games, Dr. Amina played rookie eight. The move order here is very flexible. So I went with what uh, Bassem went with before, but uh, Sasha's wife, the great Canadian and Ukrainian champion Novice Star, put 100 crowns on ID7. She won 653 crowns. As did Arena Barchuk. She put 25 and 163, as did Michael Barone, Marion Tudorache, Eddie Barber, and the rest of us um, went down the drain on Ricky 8. I still had the lead with 892. Marion right behind me with 860. Matsi 760. Nava up there to 711. And uh, Orkin, 689. Eddie Barber, Sasha Star, and I were the only players to put 100 crowns on D5. I thought it was a rather obvious move. We all won 245 crowns. My lead's looking pretty good right now. 1142. Not for long. <laughs> Bishop F6. Well, this was very predictable. Although, again, it's interchangeable. Um, a bunch of us put 100 crowns on Bishop F6. And we all won 101. Rook B1. We all had that. Uh, Rook E8. We pretty much all had that, too. And this now transposes to the game that I had looked at earlier uh, between uh, Tazbir and and Bassam Amin at Capel La Grande 2012. Now, here Gadir went into a deep think. And uh, Gadir had not had this exact position in the database. Yet, it turns out, Gadir has done extensive research on this. And in his personal database, he definitely had research on this. I don't know why he took so long. But uh, I, I tried to do my transcendental meditation. And I tried to channel my inner Gadir. Oh, and guess what? I came up with the right move. I, I tried to remember what Gadir does in positions like this, and um, I don't know if this is the best move. Actually, I don't think it is. I did it at the time, but uh, after taking some time to research this game, I don't think H4 is the best move, but it certainly caused Dr. Amin the most problems. So it was the best move for this game. Let's look at the alternatives. Uh, Amin actually won when uh, Tazbir played Bishop F4. That, that move just isn't too challenging to me. Actually, I think B3 might be a better move here. Maybe even Knight takes E5. He's just uh, going way too passive, and Dr. Amin uh, 
had had a had an excellent game. I think Knight H2 might be best, and this is a very common Rui Lopez theme that seemed to elude Gadir this whole game. Um, driving the F pawn. Now Knight H2 and the Rui isn't often always just played to drive the F pawn. A lot of times the Knight is going to G4, um, but here it's to drive the F pawn. Why isn't this a great idea? Uh, Knight C4, you rip that thing. Bishop D2. And uh, we've got uh, Sacco and Mikey Adams. Um, Lugo 2007 was a draw. But uh, we also have a win by Jeffrey Zhang against Brown. Although Brown's only a senior master, and Jeffrey Zhang is a, is a you know, super GM kid, too. Um, Dallas 2016. But uh, I think... I think this was a great uh, way to attain maybe some winning chances. Uh, King G2 scored the full point. The only time it's ever been tried. It's an interesting move, but I, I don't know if it really uh, pushes that much. It was a game between a 26-24. Uh, Kokorev against Alicinko in Kolomna, 2016. Interesting. I don't know if it's forcing enough, though. Um, and it hasn't had enough tests. So let's go back to what actually happened. H4. Now, <laughs> Black's got a box move here. He's got to play H6. It's not that hard to see. But uh, I guess Dr. Means felt some pressure here. Um, he is higher rated than Gadir, but Gadir's reputation. I mean, even Peter Heine Nielsen, when I invited him to the contest, he asked who plays in it. I told him, well, uh, me, uh, Gadir Hussein, he says, oh, Gadir, I don't know if I'm coming. So um, Gadir has had a fantastic run on uh, our site, as has Yuri Solodovnicheko, one of the most underrated grandmasters in the world, and future grandmaster Orkan Abdulov, who's an IM now and uh, really did well in this contest. So, um, Dr. Mean just played H5, and in his position was swirling down the drain after this holler, which is the first move to leave book, by the way. This move's never been played before. My contest went uh, swirling down the drain here as well. Only Ishmael Vidal put five crowns on H5. He was the only guy that had the guts to do that. So it's not choose the best move. It's choose the human move. Choose a move that nobody else has. And he won 2,580 crowns and took over the lead, which I was never to see again. Um, now, let's look at H6, what uh, Dr. Amin should have played. It's answered by G5. And in the post game, I, I don't know, I went nuts trying to remember all the varied variations where these guys made mistakes in this game, and Gadir let me, uh, reminded me, uh, no, H takes G5 just doesn't make sense here. This is not what's going on because of that. That would be good for white. But black has the outstanding research, Bishop H5, back with the pen. And uh, Gadir knew this when he played H4. So what's going on here? Uh, nobody's ever won this position. It's occurred a few times. It's always been a draw, and it actually occurred between Papanen and Noble in the 28th ICCF World Championship uh, Correspondence Final. A draw after 30 moves. So, uh, Gadir made an interesting choice that was pragmatic for this occasion, but it, it doesn't win. So, again, uh, what he came with with White, Dr. Amin should have been able to hold. But that's okay. They both made a ton of mistakes. G5, obvious and good. White's got practically one game already. Uh, Black strategically busted. Uh, some people and the engines like Bishop E5, but no way did I think Dr. Amin was going to allow death on the dark squares. Again, this guy likes his bishops as I do. Um, and, you know, when you're feeding kettle bishops, you kind of get to like them. There aren't feeding kettle bishops here, but that is uh, Dr. Amin's bread and butter. So Bishop E7 uh, was there, you know, a bunch of us had that. And now Gadir had a fantastic move. Knight H2. And driving the F-pawn. Bam! Well, dude, he missed it. I lost 100 crowns. Uh, this move existed for a few more tries. I think I wasted the two, 300 crowns on it before I said to myself, well, you know, he hasn't played it yet. He's not going to play it. He played a very normal um, Rui Lopez move of stopping that knight on a5, of coming to c4. So while he had a crusher from Russia on the king side, he went and played a prophylactic move on the queen side, which the queen, Navistar, had 100 crowns on b3, and she won 1,011 
uh, no, 1,184 crowns. So, uh, Nav is right behind me. Yeah, look at this. Ishmael in the lead, 2504. I had 1841. Nava, 1509. Uh, Irina Barchuk, 919. Marion Tudor, 775. No Orkin. No Orkin, no Yuri. What's happening with that? Well, <laughs> didn't take long. Bishop F8. Now, a bunch of people uh, played other moves here, but Bishop F8 is the normal Rui Lopez move. When you're being attacked and you want to defend, and uh, it may not, it doesn't work here, but yet only Yuri Solo, Dovnachenko, and I put 100 crowns in that. We won uh, 190. Marion Tudorache and Sasha Starr put 100 crowns in the Spiri move F6, which is kind of a French move in a Rui Lopez position, so I didn't think that would happen. They lost 100 crowns. Michael Barone and Blotz Kozmach put 25 crowns on Knight B6 and lost 25 crowns. Such is the contest. When you're choosing the moves, you're not choosing the best move. Now, you got Stockfish on the screen to help you. You got Sasha and I giving you advice. But again, it's what the guy is actually going to play. That's why Gary Kasparov, when he played in the contest, uh, he, he didn't do very well at it. So, us guys who have been coaches, like Gadir and Yuri and me, yeah, we're used to our uh, players making mistakes. So, we're pretty good at finding the dumb moves. ha, ha, ha. And now uh, Bishop F4. I, 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 they must have had a crystal ball on that one. Uh, um, I know it's Gadir. It just didn't seem, you know, Gadir's hitting the backward pawn at D6 and all that. Somehow Orkin and Michael Barone were smart enough to put 25 crowns on that, and they both won 528 crowns. Well, I wasted another 100 crowns on Gadir not finding Knight H2 again. And now, live and in color, the Twin Terrors. From the former Soviet Union, international master Orkin Abdulov from Baku, Azerbaijan, and the great grandmaster Yuri Solodovnichenko from Kherson, Ukraine. This is Howard Cosell in New York. Oh, okay, sorry about that. This isn't Monday Night Football. Sorry, guys. Um, Yuri Solodovnichenko, they both put 100 crowns on 95, and they both won 625 crowns. I cannot say Yuri Solodovnichenko's name without trying to sound like Howard Cosell. He's got a great, great name for sports and uh, awesome, awesome red pants. All right, 95. I don't know if trades are such a good idea here. Whatever. I don't know if Knight, Knight B6 is such a good idea either. There are, there are no good ideas for black here. Um, but that's okay. Kadir um, had packed his bags. He was going to head for the airport not long after this game, fly to Paris and on to Marseille, where he's going to have a great um, week in France. And I think his uh, mind went with him while he was packing. Um, Knight F1. Knight H2 again. This, this, even though he's got the bishop on F4, this is still the right move. And um, bum, ba -dum, bum bum White's killing him. Gadir is uh, opening the door a little bit for Basem to uh, get back in here. So, only Orkin, Slavko, and I put 100 crowns on Knight F1. Oh, that's right. That's right. I didn't go with... Uh, this is... I already given up on Gadir here. That's right. That he wouldn't play Knight H2. So, I, even though I knew Knight H2 was the best move, I went with uh, Knight F1, as did Orkin and Slavko, and we were rewarded with 292 crowns. And now Orkin is right behind me in third place. He passed Nava. And uh-oh. 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 Wow. Yuri Solodovnichenko. Ubiquitous. Yuri Solodovnichenko is on the board in fifth. There's trouble in River City. And Queen D7. Only Yuri Solodovnichenko. Matsi Leon, Sasha Starr, and Michael Hofer. Put a hundred crowns on Queen D7 and won a whopping 182 crowns. <laughs> Telling it like it is. All right, what other options did Black have? He could have played C4, but that just lets Knight D4 in. Uh, Knight B7, nah, that's, that's a tough move in Rui Lopez, although it is, this isn't a typical Rui position anymore. It could have gone like this, but either way, Gadir's boss. Queen d7 at least looks like it might penetrate on the on the light squares. 
And um, I felt Gadir here again in night three H two. He's not going to do it though because he hadn't done it yet. And then F four, but uh, Gadir traded. And you know what? After looking at this, why do I keep saying you know what? I find that annoying when other people do it. I apologize. The <laughs> White so far ahead, the best way to bag to win is a matter of taste. So, what, what, whatever. Uh, takes, bishop d2, hitting the knight in the rim, back to b7. King g2 to stop the queen penetration, and only Slavko Popovich put 100 crowns on rook c8. He won 861 crowns. Uh, Nate Mate, Nathaniel Toms, and Jesus Garcia put 25 crowns on rook a c8. They won 215 and uh, Guillermo Dominguez with five crowns and 143. So, I'm still on the hunt here. Uh, God bless the Soviet authorities. They haven't come at me yet. Uh, Ishmael Vidal, 2656. I had 2191. Orkin creeping on me, 1707 with his hoodie. Uh, Slavko, 1568. And Yuri with his red pants, 1509. Or 1503. Uh, C4 was probably better. And then like G3, normal Rui Lopez moves. And that's what Gadir does, normal Rui Lopez, now C4, so it can happen anyway. But boom! Knight takes H5. We know we know chicken dinner. Um, serious, serious problems here for Black. He takes on B3 after a, a pretty good think. Taking with the rook is dumb. Gadir isn't going to make that mistake. He took with the bishop. And now, Sasha Starr, during the commentary, was um, talking about the wonderful benefits of A5. Well, I actually had a game with uh, Grandmaster Gildardo Garcia of Colombia, great player, who uh, also, in a, in a Rui Lopez position, rushed the A-pawn to A4. And all that does, man, it gives Black a backward B-pawn that you just keep banging on that pawn until it bleeds. And uh, I actually had pawns at A2 and B2. I played A3 and B4. And when he went to A4, he took on Passant. And it was just very easy to bang away at the... Um, B pawn. So now let's let's assess the position. Dr. Amin, a great player, a 2700 player. He's getting killed on the king side. What is the pass pawn at d5? And now he's going to go ahead and create a backward pawn at uh, b5. And this wastes a lot of tempo too to play a5, a4. Even though you get, get it back by the bishop moving, the bishop, Gadir played an interesting finesse here. So I, I was not on that, but Sasha was. So Sasha, with his um, dubious plan, him and Igor Vaklamov, they put 100 crowns on A5. They got 888 crowns. So Ishmael, with that one-move wonder, is still in the lead. And uh, he's ahead of me by over 400 crowns. Orkin lurking in the uh, shadows, as is Slavko and Yuri. Well, I mean, what was Black going to do here, though? It was hard to even come up with an idea. Bishop H7 just gets... Uh, the H pawn rushing, and maybe even Rick H1. That's death to. Uh, and then Bishop takes H5, draws the queen in. So, but Bishop D1, look at that move. And Gadir saw that. So while I still believe the superior move here would be Knight G3, and then H5, Gadir uh, came up with a nice little idea of Queen F3, which now vacates D1 for the Bishop to retreat after Dr. Amin plays A4. So that's a pretty cool idea. I mean, white's got to win. It's a matter of taste. And uh, who had that? Only Slavko. 100 crowns. He won 11. 90 crowns. And took over the lead. Mad prop Slavko. That's how you win the contest. Playing the pragmatic move, the one that the human's likely to play. Maybe not the best move. But a move other people aren't on, and he was greatly rewarded with that. Excellent move, excellent choice, Slavko. Orkin and Hector Arias of Venezuela put 25 crowns on Queen F3, and they won 298. So now Slavko is in the lead with 2805, Ishmael 2590, Orki 2258, Mikey down to 2107, Yuri. Yuri in the dust is an unusual with 1344, and it's a Rui Lopez, Yuri. Yuri, you're, 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 you're a Rui Lopez connoisseur. So, very rare to see Yuri. Uh, I mean, fifth place is great, but and we're used to seeing guys like Yuri and Orkin and Gadir just, like, uh, winning frequently. A4. 
Everybody had that, bishop d1. We all figured that one out, knight d6. We all had that, knight d3, g3. We all had that. Maybe rook c4 here. But Basem played knight c4, and I... Now, Stockfish doesn't like bishop b4, but I knew Gadir would not miss this opportunity to play bishop b4 and remove the dark square defender and just go... Once you get rid of the dark square bishop, I felt... it. Well, at least I had notions in my head, maybe they were of sugar plums, that uh, the king side could be decimated once you get rid of that main defender. Although that uh, big pawn at g6 is kind of uh, helping the defense too. Um, so, but everybody had bishop before, despite Stockfish not understanding the position. And now, I went with rook c7 next. I couldn't see a darn thing for black to do. Bishop b4... I mean, rook c7 just gets queen g4. Queen's coming off. Uh, White's got the better end game. Uh, bishop takes b4 just enhances the ability to attack the b pawn and do the king side attack, maybe even with a rook lift. So um, bishop c5, you know, uh, in, in a lost position, that's actually probably a pretty good try. And Hector Arias was the only one smart enough to put 100 crowns on that. He got 1324. Um, we be in Hector. We're four. H5. Tempus Fugit. The big pawn's got to go backwards. And now, oh my goodness. A lot of us went with Queen G4. But only the great, your ring so low, Dovnachenko, put 100 crowns in H6, and he won. 1,275 crowns. He flew past Orkin and me and Ishmael. And he's only 100 crowns behind Slavko, so mad props Yuri. Now, Yuri comes from, like, nowhere and now is in a great position to win the contest. And let me tell you, it's often better to be second than being in the lead. When you're in the lead, you kind of want to protect the lead maybe, and uh, you might go safe with five crowns or might not pick anything at, at all. But when you're in second, it's kind of like drafting in, in, uh, in uh, auto racing. And you're getting the other guy's draft there. You know you got to swing for the fences with 100 crowns a shot. So it's more clear what Yuri should do than what Slavko should do to maybe hold on to the lead. Bishop takes b4 still goofy. Queen e7 was obvious. Every, all of us had that. A whole bunch of us. And then I forget what goofy move I went with here, but I realized right after I did it, it was a mistake because it only makes sense for Gadir to get rid of that bishop now. And he did. And then he should go queen h5, man. He should go queen h5. Queen h5, g6, queen g4. You know, get that weakness in the king side. And then uh, go pounce on the b pawn. I mean, he's got the whole salad bar. He's got the backward b pawn. He's got the uh, protected d pawn. And he's got a king side attack. So, whatever. We're four. Gadir went queen g4. And now takes his um, box. I didn't realize it at the time. But Bassem had to do that. Actually, when Bassem played g6, I thought, well, you know, maybe that's a little more clever because now Gadir has to figure out a break in. But actually, g takes h6 made a lot of sense because Gadir has to play accurately. It, it, you know, the, the uh, disco just doesn't work too well because of bishop g6. Bishop e2, and, and white doesn't have that much. White actually would have to find rook h1. Which, may, you know, I guess Gadir would do that. And then queen takes g5, rook takes h6, queen takes g4, bishop takes g4, king g7. And now, this gets crazy, man. Rook c6. We didn't look at this in the post game. This is outstanding. This is the moves you never saw in this game. And Bassem should have gone this way. Rook takes d5. Whoa! Because it gives white the chance to blunder, and white does blunder in this game a couple of times. Taking a rook, bam, thank you for the rook. And black is better and probably wins. So at this position, white would have to play knight h5 check, king back, and knight f6. And then, you know, it's a little bit tougher. It didn't look that way on the surface because of the disco, but actually this would have been a great resource maybe for Dr. Amin. But after g6, oh, by the way, nobody had that. No winners, all stakes held over. Now we got a giant pool. Bishop e2, a bunch of us had that. And then again, Bassem goes knight a3. No winners again. Knight in the rim. Um, time pressure uh, move, maybe. Also, 
bad position move. Um, knight d6 made more sense blockading the uh, the uh, d5 pawn and bishop d3, but no, he went there, and this was my total devastation here. I went with rook bc1 and didn't look at the, the fact that maybe Gadir would want to stay pouncing on the b pawn. Actually makes a lot of sense, but I went with that. And uh, rook d8 would be answered by that, and that's just great for white. So this is a great move for white, but so is rook b2. And only Orkin Abdullah of Navistar and Hector Arias put 100 crowns on that, and they three of them uh, per piece won 857 crowns. Thus, right here, right here on this stage, you're looking live at Chess Star Stadium. The Orkin man took the lead, which he would not relinquish. Bravo, Orkin. He won the contest right there. But he wasn't through. The guy didn't take his foot off the pedal the rest of the game, uh, which is admirable. It's what you kind of have to do when you're lead, because sometimes being timid, you get caught. Uh, double trouble with the Rooks. And now Rook D1, Sasha talked me into this. It makes sense. I blew 100 crowns on it because Gadir went crazy. Gadir missed, uh, <laughs> he said in a postmortem, that was just a blunder, man. He didn't see, I guess he missed that the rook was hitting the bishop sideways and that after the pin rook b8 that uh, black's on the uh, bishop three times and uh, it can only be defended twice. So this was not a sacrifice. Gadir just in an overwhelming position on a piece. <laughs> And to my credit, I never for a second in the broadcast thought it was a sacrifice. Uh, in fact, uh, I love Gadir dearly, but I looked at that and said, wow, way to blow the game, Gadir. <laughs> Queen e2 takes. And now, uh, actually, it's slightly better to double the rooks here with this. But Gadir traded some more. And now Basem isn't totally lost. And again, rook b8 wins the game. Bam, bam, takes, takes, and queen a6, game over. Turn out the lights, the party's over. But no, Gadir, thinking about maybe the beaches in France, played rook b6. No winners, stakes all held over. Now, Gadir missed, uh, er, earlier, he missed the fact that black could play rook b8, and now he missed the fact that he could play rook b8. So it's like, there's a bad spot in the disk drive there on the B8 square for Gadir here. I mean, maybe his vision or something. I don't know. It's just kind of funny because Gadir doesn't make mistakes like this almost never. So, uh, Rook B6. And now, out of the golden skies, the Egyptian has a quality. And look at the time. Basem had been in severe time trouble. Gadir followed him. White has 254 left and black 159. And at the end, Gadir had nine seconds left when Basem ran out of time. So Rook A6, another, I don't know, man. Rook D8, Queen E3. And now, um, F6 is box. It's the only way to hold. Rook A7, Queen F8, Knight F1. White just has a slight edge. They're both in time pressure. They're both making mistakes. That was the way to proceed, but no. Another hallucination. Uh, earlier, Basem had gone h5 instead of h6, and now he goes f5 instead of f6. And Orkin even wins on losing moves. Only Orkin Abdulov and Yevgeny Miller put 25 crowns on f5. They both won 653 crowns. Orkin has the lead with uh, 3924, Slavko 3212, Ishmael 3199, Yuri 2969, and Blotz 2069. He takes f5. Now it's easy for Gadir. Takes back. Rook a7. Rook in the seventh. Not hard to find. And what's black supposed to do here? Seriously. f4. That's right. Okay. I had forgotten. I wasn't even looking at the board, really. I was looking at the scroll bar. Yeah, f4. 4q. That's what he had to do. Wait, where are we? Oh, no, I jumped way ahead. Never mind. Never mind. My bad. All right, Rick D7. Only Victor Mago had that. He got 778 crowns, but it was too little too late for him. So takes, takes. Queen takes E5, and now F4 was boxed. There we go. Um, F4, forking, and queen takes. 
Yeah, that had to be played. Bishop G6, pretty much a losing move. Knight E2, and still refusing to take his foot off the accelerator. Somehow Orkin, when F4 was a decent move, a move earlier, now uh, Bassem plays it now, and Orkin had it. 100 crowns on F4, winning 1,625 crowns. This was Orkin's best performance in a contest ever. Mad props to uh, the Orkin man. 59-17, Ishmael, 34-54, Slavko, 31-02, Yuri, 30-84, Blotz, 1982. And, wow. Only Novice Star and Irina Barczyk put 100 crowns in F3, and both those fine ladies won uh, 518 crowns. Nobody's catching Orkin. I don't know why Gadir didn't just take the pawn. Now, Knight C4, now, now it's a slight edge again for Gadir. Gadir could go Queen D4 or Queen F4. I think I picked Queen D4 and Gadir picked the Queen F4. Only Slavko Popovich and Igor Vaklamov put 100 crowns on that. They both won 511, too little, too late. Queen takes, Queen F6, Queen F7, Queen D4, and now Queen C7 would have been the uh, clever move to uh, maybe draw this match yet. And then uh, maybe freeze the knight momentarily. The queen goes back, knight F4. There's not much happening here. However, in uh, time pressure, Dr. Amin plays the losing move, King H7. And Gadir finds knight f4. Amazing. And the ever consistent Michael Barone put 25 crowns on bishop b1. Maybe knight a5 made more sense. It really doesn't matter. But uh, Mike is very consistent. He got 1,005 crowns on that. Knight d5. Bishop takes pawn. But it, 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 it's over. Even though he's uh, given up the piece. Kadir still wins this because of knight f6 or queen e4. They both work. And even now, even now, Orkin put uh, 25 crowns in king g7 won 880 crowns. Just a uh, total dominating performance by Orkin, who has now nearly twice the crowns of Ishmael Vidal. And uh, 6,704 uh, 6, to Ishmael's uh, 3538. And the game ended up queen d8. They're, they're making moves really fast now. King G1 and uh, Bassem ran out of time. He was a, quite a sportsman about this game. And uh, the contest, oh, and it was mate and eight anyway, so it didn't matter. Orkin Abdullah won the contest with 6,619 crowns, 56% correct. He had 29 of white's moves correct, 27 of blacks. Slavko, 70%. Good showing. Ishmael. Pretty much got his uh, bounty on one move. Yuri, very consistent, 74%. Go down to me here, 12th. 12th. I was leading this contest at every move right. I had the first 15 right. I had 75, correct. Oh, that's not percent. That's number right. My bad. Okay, well then. Anyway, uh, here's the rest of the contestants. We had a good turnout. The people uh, had a lot of fun. And I promise you. It's not only as fun, you can win money. I don't care what your age is, and you will at least come out of it becoming a better player. So uh, those of you who do participate, man, like us on Facebook. Share our YouTube videos. Get the word out. Let's make this the greatest contest in the world. Let's make this the greatest chess site in the world. So please, don't forget to share. Don't forget to tell your friends. And thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.